If I gave you $100 billion with the caveat, you have to spend it to try to answer the question, are we alone? What would you spend it on? Influencing the next election. <laughs> what, explain the chain of reasoning there. <clears throat> well, uh, we have evolved to the point where we might prevent the next Median tragedy or cause it. Right. And if we want to <laughs> at least keep the number of planets with animal life at a minimum of one, we might want to invest those resources that way. Hundred billion dollars. Caveat, you have to spend it to try to answer the question, are we alone? Okay, do I have to, do I have to spend it honestly or can I? Any way you want. Okay, then I'd say we do a drilling program to drill deep within the earth in search of different forms of life on earth, oh. okay, to find out whether we're not alone on earth because it's tractable and we can maybe oh. see something in human lifetimes. I would spend a lot of money trying to understand how life originated here on Earth. We don't know a lot about that. I don't think we know a definition of life that everyone agrees with. Uh, the first thing I do is to look for a second form of life on Earth, because that's the easiest thing. Uh, here we are, planet Earth, we're already examining uh, at an accelerated pace all the different microbial life forms around us. Uh, we need to be aware of the fact that there may be microbes which are life, but not as we know it. And so my first mm research thrust would be that. That would be the easiest to do. I would probably do more solar system exploration, the places we can actually go to, although I suspect that the probability of success in that kind of venture is certainly not zero, but it's not high either. <laughs> That's a good question. I, one of the things I would do first is go for, I think, some um, uh, environments and watery environments in our own solar system that we could get to relatively easily. I think sample return is the answer to sample return from Mars. That. From yeah, from Mars probably. Yes, Mars. I would uh, send a rover to Mars to collect samples, bring them back home. I would send something through the plumes of Europa to collect a sample, bring it back home, or or land on Europa and, and get down to the, the oceans there. Maybe two or three billion dollars will get you some good sample or return missions to a bunch of planets, which would be like Mars or solar system planets, solar system planets uh, which might get you the answer or might not. I would spend it searching for planets orbiting sun-like stars to search for the true Earth twin, where we have some grounding and understanding of planetary, of planetary science and of sun-like environments. With $100 billion, I could build a really fancy space telescope. Help contribute to larger telescopes that could help us discern the composition of more, the atmospheres of more and more Earth-sized planets um, in our stellar neighborhood. I would also be uh, definitely um, inclined to advance uh, space travel and remote detection of molecules in the universe. There is remote sensing, uh, as we're doing now, basically looking for signals. Um, uh, and there are all kinds of uh, artificial signals that one can look for. So first would be, the first task would be to brainstorm through all possible signals that we could detect with such an investment of funds. I would spend it uh, piecewise. There's no one gigantic project you can say, this will answer my question. Uh, I think we will have to proceed in a series of steps. Uh, do what we can today with what we have today. Um, build the equipment you can imagine today. Measure something you can look for today. And then uh, when you see what that answer is, then decide what you need to build next. So you can't really make a very long-term plan. Well, the obvious strategy, it seems to me, is the one that people rarely do, which is wait. I put it in the, uh, in, a, in the ground and make sure nobody else got it until there was a decent chance of it actually producing something. Uh, I'd, I'd say to you, I don't want $100 million. I'd say, oh, I'd say that, $100 billion. No, I don't want $100 billion. I'm not, I'm, Rutherford said once when he discovered the nucleus that uh, a, a reporter asked him, you know, how you, other countries had much more, much more money. How was it? that he discovered the nucleus. And he said, well, we didn't have much money, so we had to think more. <laughs> and I think being flooded with money is very bad news for anybody who's working on theory. I really haven't thought about it. No. I think because any finite amount of money has to be used very carefully. 100 billion is a finite number.
Yes. Okay. Therefore, uh, you have to optimize as to what is the best way to do that. I would probably think this is really talking through the hat of the cuff. Probably we will think increasing the speed of spaceships. After I spent about 80 billion on myself, I take the 20 billion. <laughs> what and you do? 80 billion dollars. <laughs> I'm sure I can find something. So I give you 100 billion dollars, and can you make something with that money? That can you answer some question that is relevant to the question? Are we alone? Can you make uh, any progress? I suspect a little progress could be made, but not 100 million dollars worth. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you bury the money. That's why I bury the money. <laughs> okay, so how long is this money going to stay in the ground? Uh, that's another question. Um, I think it may only stay in the ground 50 years or so. Until? Uh, until our knowledge that uh, there are planets with water that are at reasonable temperatures, etc. And I don't really believe that you necessarily need planets with water to make life. I think there may be... That's, uh, that, that's narrow thinking. So I think that it may be possible to get bacteria and other things in, in quite, as it were, alien conditions that are rather alien to what we think about as, as, as life, as, as life-giving places. But, um, you know, I don't think people are terribly interested. I mean, scientists would be terribly interested in making sure that there was a microbe somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always like Hilaire Belloc. You like who? Hilaire, Hilaire Belloc. Hilaire, what is that? He's a man. Okay. A well, Frenchman who came to England. He would have liked to have been a member of the upper classes, but he wasn't. Oh. So okay. he wrote satirical verse. Uh -huh. And the microbe is one of his best. Mm -hmm. The microbe is so very small, you cannot make him out at all. But many sanguine people hope to see him through a microscope. <laughs> His jointed tongue that lies beneath a myriad serried rows of teeth. His eyebrows, sorry, his, uh, his seven tufted tails with lots of lovely pink and purple spots on each of which a pattern stands composed of 30 separate bands. His eyebrows of a tender green. All these have never yet been seen, but scientists who ought to know assure us that they must be so. Oh, let us never, never doubt what nobody is sure about. 